Friday, and we welcome uh, uh, Senator John Tester on set Great this to be morning. Here. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming in. Maybe let's elbow bump. Yeah, exactly. It <laughs> seems to be right. like the safe way. Right. Um, so we have a lot of uh, things to talk about today. Let's just jump right in. Yeah. First of all, coronavirus yeah. concerns are uh, at the top of our mm -hmm. list to this morning. Um, what have you been seeing as far as um, the federal level? Economic relief is supposed to be a topic today. Well, we passed House. a package out, uh, $8 billion package, uh, basically to kind of stem the tide on, on a lot of the medical stuff, uh, quite frankly, but there's going to be a much bigger package that gets passed. Uh, we were supposed to be in state next week. Uh, we're going to go back in. I hope we do. I uh, wish to kept us there this weekend, quite frankly, to pass this package because I think it's really, really important we do. And it's it's uh, it needs to be focused around the people who can't work because they have the virus and businesses are impacted by it. Um, I know that there's a lot of folks that want to get a much bigger package than that, but I think if we're going to if we're going to really help the economy, that's the best way to do it. We've used many of the tools like tax breaks and lowering interest rates already when the economy was good. Mm -hmm. So the number of things we have to do to help turn it around, we need to really keep them focused uh, because it's it's important. Uh, all this money, the budget that came out is, adds a trillion dollars to the debt right off the top. So all this money adds money to the debt. So we have to be very, very cautious about what we do moving forward. But make no mistake about it, it's a very fluid situation. Mm -hmm. I do not think the administration has done a good job addressing it. They were in denial in the beginning. And uh, and now uh, we're hearing from the medical folks that are talking about you know the impacts of this. And as the governor said, it isn't a time to panic. But it is time to have good hygiene. If you're sick, stay home. And hopefully we can develop a package at the federal level that will help keep the folks who can't work afloat. Right, of course. And just following up on that package, how soon do you expect that legislation to be passed? Is this something that we can look forward to? Well, as you said, it's fluid. But. I, I, they, the leadership was negotiating yesterday. I have okay. not heard whether they came up with a final package or not. But Monday at the latest, we should have it through both houses and have it to the president's desk. Um, as long as it's a reasonable package, doesn't have a lot of garbage in it, which oftentimes Congress does that, but a reasonable package focused on the problem, I think we can get good bipartisan support for it. Okay, and talking a little bit about the response here on the state level, obviously Bullock declaring a state of emergency yesterday. How does that, um, I, I guess, help the state mobilize resources? Well, I think it, it not only helps uh, Governor Bullock within the state of Montana, but it's all, it also helps him get federal resources in much quicker. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of delay. As I said, if you if you take a look at where we were a week ago or two weeks ago with, with COVID-19, it has changed uh, incredibly. I mean, who would have thought a week ago they were going to shut down the NCAA basketball tournaments in many of the, uh, many of the gatherings here in the state of Montana uh, that, that have people like the NAI tournament in Billings and others. But next week, it's going to be the same thing. I think it's going to be a different landscape, and I think the governor was smart declaring a disaster because, quite frankly, now, or emergency situation, because now, quite frankly, he can get, get the dollars ahead of time to be able to do the most good. It's okay. good planning on his part. Right. Okay. And just talking a little bit about what you're seeing in D.C., um, you're obviously traveling back, back and forth. Are you worried at all about yourself uh, contracting any coronavirus? Yeah, virus? actually, I'm more worried about you contracting a coronavirus <laughs> you know, like, that a I might have. <laughs> the, the, the problem with all this has been testing. Uh, yeah. We just haven't had the tests. You know, uh, the administration pushed away the World Health Organization test. We haven't been able to get answers on why that was done. Mm -hmm. uh, all the other countries in the world are using it, and they're test testing at a much higher rate than we are. And if you're gonna, if you've got a, a, a virus that spreads rapidly, you need to know where that virus is so you can isolate folks. Uh, I will tell you that if I could get a test and I knew, because I've been around thousands of people over the last two weeks, mm -hmm. that some of them, very, well, some of them have had it. Representative Brownlee had it. I was sitting next to her in a VA hearing. That list goes on. I wouldn't be here doing this interview if I knew that, you know, right. but I can't get a test. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a thousand of them in the state and that's actually pretty good. Uh, for what the rest of the country is like. So, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge and you never know. And, you know, everybody has aches and pains. And especially if you get a little older, uh, it can't paralyze you. But by the same token, you need to take appropriate precautions. And the test is the baseline for that. Okay, and talking about appropriate precautions, uh, the Secretary of the Air Force was uh, supposed to be coming here to Montana. That has been either delayed or canceled, I'm not sure which. Well, it was canceled. Uh, okay. Hopefully it's a delay. Uh, she needs to come up at the Guard and take a look at the, the assets we have at the Guard and, and some of the, the issues that we have up there. The C-130Js is the big one. Mm -hmm. And then also get out to Malmstrom and, and look at the challenges we have at Malmstrom you know, whether it's in housing or whether it's the structures that are being built out there now to, to accommodate the missile 
uh, to missiles charges. So we have a lot of things for her to see. She has not been here yet. She's fairly new to the position. Mm -hmm. She has some Montana connections, so I anticipate she will be back. But, you know, scheduling and then pulling it down and rescheduling, it all takes time to do all that stuff. So right. uh, we'll be working with her to make sure we can try to get her back into the state. I think it's really important for our national security, and I think it's really important for Montana. Okay, and um, you obviously will be visiting the uh, Mount Sherman Air Force Base. Uh, before we wrap up, what are your key priorities during your visit today? Well, I think, uh, number one, the weapons storage facility. All this stuff is in, is in the mix, uh, making sure that the upgrades on the missiles continue to move forward over the next decade, mm -hmm. uh, and making sure they have housing. That's another one that's a big issue for Malmstrom. Um, and then I will tell you, equally important in my mind is what's going on at the Air Guard, making sure that... We have the oldest C-130s in the fleet. There's going to be 24 newer C-130s that come online, new ones, 130Js. Making sure that we're able to get those Js up at the hill is going to be really, really important uh, to secure a long-term mission for, for our Air Guard. All right, perfect. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have with Senator Tester. Thank you so much for taking time. It's a, always a pleasure, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Jason Laird, we'll be back with your full forecast.